Hey, hey, party people. We are going to test out a new to me brand of gouache, Karen Dosh. Karen Dosh gouache. Say that seven times fast. Okay, so I didn't know Karen Dosh made gouache up until October of this year when I went to Denver for a quick visit. Uh, shout out to everyone who showed up to the Denver meetup. That was super fun. And I love all of you. We had a blast. We critiqued uh, one of the meetup people brought their portfolio, so we critiqued it as a group, and I don't know if they had fun, but I had fun. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I love the Karen Dosh Luminance color pencils, but that doesn't actually guarantee anything because there are Winsor & Newton products I love, some I don't, you know. I think that's true for every brand. So we'll see. These are moderately priced. I cannot remember offhand, but I will blast it on the screen during editing. I've never used them yet, although I have yellow everywhere because I dropped the two right in the middle of... Yeah, I'm so not clumsy and stuff. Mm. Real quick, because y'all always ask me what I'm using. The paper I'm using for testing is this Canson 300 GSM 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This is... Uh, a medium quality paper. This is not my fancy nice arches for big projects. This is not super cheap cruddy paper. This is good paper, not great paper. I like using medium grade paper for testing paints. Do you remember when I went to Denver and I bought a $57 paintbrush? So I'm going to use this today. I haven't used this yet, but I am dying of curiosity. So this is what I'm painting with today. This is the Escoda Reserva Kalinsky Tajmir Sable made in Barcelona in a 10 round. Look at that point. Look at how, oh, and you know what? It feels so nice in my hand already. Ugh. You know, I have a love-hate relationship with expensive stuff turning out to be awesome. So, of course, I have put this brush in water and soaked the hairs, but in order to test the opacity, I'm just going to gently squeeze most of the water out so I can get the most opaque paint possible. Let's start with the yellow, which I really don't think is going to be that opaque. a lot of paint in one little dab. It really spreads that color. Ooh. Let's try to add another layer of some yellow here. It's pretty dry. I'm just adding a little bit of water here. I'll try to get that blue moving. Cyan. I know gouache doesn't really cover dark pencil lines like that 100%, but I was hoping for a bit more opacity. But I will say the colors are very vibrant, quite beautiful. I would say that the quality so far, obviously, uh, I would say that the quality so far more closely resembles the ever so slightly plasticky nature of the Holbein gouache more than the Windsor Newton or the Knicker or the Pabeo. But look at these colors, y'all. Let's test the black. I was gonna be real sad if even the black wasn't opaque. I mean, the yellow, of course, is perfectly excusable. I've never seen a yellow gouache completely cover a pencil or anything that's similar light shade like that. Listen, this brush is a freaking dream. I keep accidentally picking up too much paint because these sable hairs, these Kalinsky Scable, Kalinsky Scable, I keep saying that, ah, Kalinsky Sable brush hairs, just, <laughs> this gouache dries fast. You see that? Like I didn't blend for like a second and 
the edge dried so fast already. That's kind of what's preventing it from being super blendable. I want a little bit more work time. Oh, look at the brush tip on this. All right, let's put on another layer. See what happens. Okay, that builds up and lays beautifully. Getting that really intense yellow in there, like that. So far, when you use these very opaquely, it's got that plasticky, kind of jelly-ish, more texture. Uh, and then when you water it out, it kind of behaves like other gouaches do. So these, I pulled these Winsor & Newton gouache just for a little comparison. So this is the Winsor & Newton Spectrum Yellow. You do see the shade difference. Their Spectrum Yellow is a bit on the warmer side. But see how it blends out so much better? Look at that. It's so much more easily. Like I was starting to feel like a real idiot <laughs> trying to blend those out. Ugh, this Rose Tyrion is like my life. Uh. Someone left me a comment the other day. Uh, oh, they were like, when you applied that noodler's black ink onto the paper, I like literally shed a tear. I'm like, I feel you, homegirl. I do. Seriously, I need a lipstick in this color, don't you think? All right, so look at... The shade difference there. Okay. And notice even with the yellow that the Winsor Newton is a hair more opaque. And that's just one layer. The Cerulean definitely. And this, the Cerulean is one of the slightly milkier ones. And then there's the Winsor Newton Rose Tyrion versus the purple Caran d'Ache. I can't believe Caran d'Ache calls this purple. <laughs> Let's do a test garment. So I just mixed a little bit of the purple, the magenta, with the cyan to get this bluish purple, blue violet color. Whenever I do something like this, where you see like extra paint bubbles, I squeeze out the excess moisture in my brush and I just kind of scoop up puddles of leftover paint. See that? So I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, our little dress is dry, so let's put in some shadows. Should probably be using a slightly smaller brush, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, for this section, I'm going to mix the Caran d'Ache and the Winsor Newton together. 
see if they play well together. Nah. This is the point where everything looks kind of like a mess and I'm super tempted to like <laughs> post a bunch of photos of my actual gouache work to prove to you that I'm not usually this disaster. <laughs> I don't like this gouache. I wanted to like it because I wanted to give you, you know, I wanted to give people an option that wasn't 800 bajillion million dollars. This is my final assessment. It's plasticky. It's more plasticky than the whole bind. It doesn't blend well when it's on the more opaque side. It blends okay when it's watered down like watercolor. It doesn't really play well with others. The colors are beautiful. Uh, but the whole point for me for gouache is to play with the opacity, to play with it opaque, to play with it watered down, and to use that to my advantage when I'm rendering textures. So if I can't use it opaquely, then what's the point? I have watercolors that I like already. So yeah, this made me look like a painting failure mess, like a hot painting mess. Ugh. Here's the black. And remember how, first of all, it does cover the black. Remember how I wrote right here? It does cover it, but it's a very weak black. Here's the Winsor Newton Ivory Black. So we'll let that dry. Everything looks nice when it's wet, but. If you are interested in gouache and you are watching your budget, then I would say to stick to Series 1 Colors, Series 2 Max in the Winsor Newton. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here. Do you see where it says Series 4? Okay, many paints are priced in this way. When you see, when you're at the art store, you'll see like a price placard in the front and there's prices for series one paint, series two, series three, series four, all within the same category, like Windsor & Newton, designer's gouache, series one, series three, you know, all the way to four. And when you're ordering paints online, you'll see that different colors are different prices because of the cost of ingredients that go into making the different colors. Series four is the most expensive, you know, the higher the number, the more expensive it is, usually. So if you stick to Series 1, the occasional Series 2 color, I think it should be fine. This is a Series 1, the Spectrum Yellow. The Ivory Black is a Series 1. The Rose Tyrion is a Series 2. The Burnt Umber is a Series 1, right? So you have lots of options. You don't have to buy a $17 tube of gouache to have professional quality paints at your disposal. Okay. But I think this was a failed experiment. I'm glad I did it. I'm always happy to test out new things to see whether it's good for my students and my beautiful YouTube audience. So that's a wrap on this one. Please drop me any questions you have in the comment section below. Do give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to see more product review videos. And uh, I will see you in the next video.